Okay, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for those of you who do not know me, my name is Malia Kurogawa, um, born and raised here on Molokai. I want to thank you all for being here and attending this meeting. Um, I was, I'm also um, the co-o for the Australia, um, and some sense, I guess I'm serving in that couple. So I received like several calls um, from our our people being con really concerned about um, the deer dying, especially on the west end, and that their health conditions are looking very poor. Um, and so there's some concern about you know, earlier on, Uncle Mac Poi Poi had shared with our own the issue of police as more of our people need to be hunting to, you know the economic issues caused by COVID that there would be more waste on the mountain that, that could cause a disease vector. So we, we have we just had several like a perfect storm occurring in the We've had a very prolonged drought. Our winter rain is not, not coming in. Um, and then well, I'm currently right now in Mono Law. Personally, I'm seeing, um, yes. You're breaking up, Malia. So much of the vegetation, yeah, being affected. Um, so what we're seeing is a lot of dead deer on the on the land, and then in the neighborhood here at Monolia, and I also um, what's happening with uh, um, <clears throat> the the homesteaders in Honolulu. A lot of the deer are invading their their farms. Hi, Malia, you're breaking up. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't know how I could fix that. Um, it's just the internet connection here. Um, but I'm going to just hopefully try my best is to maintain. But basically what, what I'm seeing is that what we're witnessing on our island is a lot of deer dying, very malnourished and um, you know, lacking access to water and food, and the vegetation is being um, denuded. We're also experiencing um, the deer going into uh, Manoloa town and into residences here and eating whatever vegetation they can find in people's lawns and gardens. Um, I'm hearing that... Irrigation is um, we're, we're having uh, issues with just lack of access to water. I've also been hearing from the hunters in this area that the deer are drinking the raw sewage, um, a lot of desperation. So there, there is a concern of the quality, you know, the safety of eating the deer in this area. And then um, recent, you know, in our Ahakiole proceedings, Uncle Mac Poi Poi had raised concern very early on, this was in March, April, and the need to conduct a meeting with the hunters. Um, because of COVID, the economic situation, more of our people are needing to rely on deer to eat. And so what we're, what is the concern is that um, as carcasses are left on the land, that it's creating a disease. Um, and, and with rains coming, there's possibility of, of 
you know, dizzy, dead corpses, dead uh, deer corpses entering the, wa the waters. Mm -hmm. I know that people are concerned about drought and the winter rains not, not being as heavy as normal, but perhaps that is a blessing in disguise because if we, if we continue to have the deer carcasses on the land, um, we're gonna face water contamination and potential falling of our fishery and then the fish may be unsafe to eat. So I'm, we're dealing with a dire situation on many levels. So we have dying deer. I think it's imperative that we get some kind of veterinarian to test the deer and see if there's any disease. We also don't want to perpetuate potential, you know, these dead corpses as being a potential vector for disease because it affect um, existing healthy deer, deer. So we have our population of deer. We have a water situ, you know, lack of water. Um, the vegetation being eaten down to the bone, you got exposed. The soil here is even more exposed than it already has been. Um, you having deer drinking raw sewage. Um, so there's a, a need to somehow contain that sewage area so the deer don't access that. Um, my concern as well is that is it even safe anymore to eat deer in this area. Um, also, I kind of did like a reconnaissance a few nights ago, was driving from Mana'e, Kilohana side all the way to Mauna Loa. And usually it's an hour drive, but it took an hour and a half. And there, oh, actually it took two hours drive. And it, um, there was deer running across the road all the way from Manae. So we got pro heavy proliferation of deer throughout our entire island. So I think what's happening on the West End is a cautionary tale for Central Molokai and, and Manae. If we don't take care of this issue, mm -hmm. it's gonna get worse. So I also invited Coco Agustero, and I'm not sure if she's on this Zoom, um, but she, she, I briefly talked with her and she said she's working with uh, um, the state DLNR and uh, Department of Agriculture, um, Representative Decoy and Senator English on this issue. Um, and she, has been working with, um, <clears throat> she has been working with hunters and the Molokai Hunting Club to try, and she, she said they just got to fill out liability waivers and they can go and hunt on the land. <clears throat> I think we need um, to deal with the waste issue that, that needs to be addressed first. If the rains are delayed, we have maybe one, one to two or three month window to get these dead carcasses off the land and into trenches. So we got to coordinate um, getting, digging pits. Um, maybe we got to get hunters to do like volunteer days where they go out with one shovel and you know the deer that are in remote areas where we cannot dig trenches, then they dig one grave for these deer. But I'm here to listen to the expertise of our hunters, especially in this area, on what they think needs to be done. But there needs to be some kind of massive coordination. And so I'm hoping that Coco is here. Uh, Coco, if you are here, can you speak up? She's just coming up. Is it ringing? She just came in. 
I don't, I guess she's not on the line. Um, but if there is anyone that can. Hey, what? Hey, I'm with Teddy. <laughs> okay. well, is there anyone that wishes to speak? Burn the and also burn the white. Uh, hi, yeah. Do you what? So I just. Somebody else can silence their. Um, I hear a noise in the background. I can't really speak. Okay, go so, ahead. Yeah, I just want to expand the issue beyond um, the emergency that you're talking about, because, like you said, it's going to affect the whole island. Mm -hmm. So in the Holy Hui area, how it's affecting us is the farms. Uh, the deer are eating our crops. Um, I know that it's, some farmers have gone out of business because they could not fence in to protect their, um, their crops, so that's an issue. But I think even on a deeper level, we're talking about food sovereignty, um, even home gardens are being eaten. And so you know, it's a crisis in Mauna Loa, but it's also um, a great indication um, in Holy Hua that our, our food sovereignty is being threatened. Um, you know, I, my, um, the, the generation below are talking about how they see on Facebook you know, criticism of killing the deer. Um, and so I think we gotta be really open and have discussions about, you know, yeah, we have the Kuleana to Malama, the Aina to, to Malama creation, but there has to be that balance. And so I'm hoping that we can focus on how do we solve the issue. I mean, I'm having to, with my son, look for funds to try to encompass 10 acres of, um, of land because the deer just, they come into your yard, they've eaten our crotons, they've eaten our, they eat our limes. I mean, we don't have leaves until it's the area where they cannot actually reach it. Um, they're eating, they eat taro, which they never used to. And so the leaves, so I think we, you know, we need to, I'm hoping we can broaden the discussion for um, that, arena as well, because there are folks that have that um, concern. And, you know, there is an opportunity to look for solutions that's more long-term rather than just the emergence of making food safe to eat. Thank you for your Manao auntie. And um, yeah, I think there has to be a, a broader management plan that addresses all these issues um, in terms of, I think we gotta look at immediate, short term, medium term, and then long term. Um, I think the more, most imminent issue is the, the waste of we gotta get. Uh, I mean, this way. We we have to get the uh, deer population to a sustainable level, because right now I think we're exceeding the carrying capacity. Yeah? And given that there are no apex predators for the deer, um, there's been a population explosion. I believe also, you know, listening to a lot of the different countries, there's a possibility to, to catch only the large bucks. So um, I think we're having, you know, where people not just catching for the meat, you know, and not catching those. So we're just having a lot of, they're being born into an island now that doesn't, that lacks the carrying capacity to, Sustain, so we have to be realistic. We have to be realistic about. Um, I think we gotta figure out how many are 
on the land and what is the carrying capacity of this area and then how do we at least call out the diseased ones or those who are very weak so it doesn't continue to affect the viability of the existing population. And then we have to be realistic about what are sustainable land. And then, and then provide protection for our farmers as well. Um, and I think it's almost kind of like how our kupuna created fish ponds in the sense that they knew that if we didn't create fish ponds, we'd be pounding the reef and the open ocean too much. And, and so, do we need to create these? Not a very good signal. No. You know, planting certain plants and making sure they have water and sort of containing them in a certain area so that our, you know, upper forest is protected and we continue to attract the rain cloud. Um, so it, it's a very comprehensive way we, an ecosystem level we need to be looking at. Um, anyway, um, I don't know. Does anybody, Malia? Yeah, go ahead, Auntie. Is it Malia? Um, this is this is Auntie Stacy Crivello, and um, I just wanted to kind of um, segue off what you're talking about the west side um, and so that you're aware that the um, county of Maui as well as the state of Hawaii um, because accordingly to Koko and Molokai Ranch they don't have the necessary resources to um, deal with the weak animal, the sickly animal as well as um, removing the dead carcasses. So as of yesterday, um, the LNR and the County of Maui, which they have been helping, I guess, according to where they can, is to remove the dead carcasses, uh, dig, um, if you want to call it a carcass grave, and line, line, line. And then that is how they're addressing the West End um, situation. Uh, from what I understand, which I sometimes question, why is it that the ranch doesn't have the resources to um, to do such or even manage uh, their lands? So, and it is obvious that, and I'm sure the hunters themselves that are on here, like uh, Mac and Walter, can agree that the population is an overpopulation. Um, I've met with um, Representative DeCoit and um, yeah, well, I participated in a meeting that she hosted and we know that the state is in a situation of not having funds and we have to find resources as how we're gonna address the needs for uh, ranchers, farmers, uh, our tables. And, um, you know, I think we've come to the point where I've never seen such an overpopulation of deer that, um, I mean, we all grew up with the animal around us, but not right up to our doorsteps. And um, so I would hope that we can come up with um, some sort of management plan. Um, and fencing costs money, and then fencing moves them on other areas, but we're gonna try and protect what we can. So I think even on Maui, they have a problem. I don't think they re recognize or realize how they don't address it sooner than later. Um, we, we cannot resolve it. And fencing is not necessarily the answer, is how do we come to the point that we have a manageable population? Um, and I represent the Office of the Mayor but I, I more important part of this, we are Molokai, so what, what do we want done, you know? I think the county um, has some funds, um, and I think if we try and all come together with some kind of make sense plan, maybe we can work out, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm participating to hear the answers. I think we all know the problem <coughs> is what, what, what can we do, or what should we be doing? 
that, that's just my part. But I know in the, the Western side, uh, it's been addressed and COCOA has participated. And uh, as of yesterday, um, the, the, the entities within the county and the state, the state only has a, a, a equipment, I think a backhoe, I'm not sure. Uh, likewise with the county. Um, so what do, what do we need to do to remove this weak or the sickly that, that just dies on? But there's also the hazardous right on the highway. The, last week, um, right before the Plumeria Farm, there was a huge accident because the herd was crossing. Um, so they're all over. I, I just feel that we got to come together with some kind of consensus and then how do we outreach for the resources to um, help us to resolve this. Yes. Thank you. So Malia, uh, just so, as a matter of information, um, I know you've been talking with Glenn and there is a small group um, and we're trying to you know, get more folks involved in trying to, uh, in looking at how we can manage the population in Ho'olihua um, so that um, farmers can survive and, you know, home gardens can continue to thrive. So it's under, oh, under sustainable. Under sustainable. Um, so I'm, um, Wondering if maybe a committee yeah. in different areas, because it sounds like Mauna Loa has a, you know, a major crisis of dying deer. Uh, we have a major crisis of invading deer, and you know the other areas, um, uh, you know, Kanakakai and Manae side. Maybe they they have the same or maybe a little bit different issues. So. Wondering if Mauna Loa has a committee or if a committee could be formed to address there and then we could kind of, you know, see, like do that assessment and then try to bring those different committees together to see if we have ways to, res you know, to resolve the different problems. But I think we need to have um, some kind of coordinated effort to at least, like you said, assess the problem in more detail uh, and in different areas. And then let's see what kind of ideas we can come up with. What do I do? Turn off the volume. Too close together. <clears throat> Some people in the house that are adding to the zooms. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I still want to okay. Um. I think I think you're right, Auntie Barbara. We need to have um. Some kind of like monologue committee. Um. I wish um. Coco was here so she could explain what she's doing with the existing network of hunters. But um, initially, I was like, we got to get at least uh, hunters together um, to figure out how we're going to deal with what's happening here since it's, it seems to be the most dire situation. And then Ho'olehu is the next level dire situation. Um, so I don't. I feel like we. It's like we gotta create like a triage kind of plan. Um, it's good that there are some funding. I'm not sure how quickly government can act, and it seems like at least with the waste issue, um, we gotta act more more quickly. I mean, we have to act. Anti, can you? Can I think we have to act? Um, immediately you know this is a emergency situation i think so i'm wondering if you know the one thing about molokai is we have the power of community and community can act quicker than government so i'm wondering if we have to develop a plan at least for this 
immediate um, threat that we're dealing with. If if certain people, you know, who have heavy equipment can make trenches, if we can coordinate hunters to begin to call out any of the diseased looking animals and very weak ones and, you know, intentionally bury all of them. So we got to get the dead ones off the land and into, into a pit. We got to get um, the weak ones called out. And I think, and we got to solve, resolve that sewage issue so that the deer aren't drinking sewage water. And then I think if we could create maybe a situation where we can dig a pit for the hunters in this area so that anytime they do hunt, they can just deposit those carcasses in that pit, line it with lime or whatever, so that we don't perpetuate the problem. So I think we got to figure out that issue first and then and then um in the meantime as we're getting government assistance then we got to look at you know giving homestead farmers fencing material to keep the um yeah he um, so I'm, I'm wondering if in this room or if people know of certain people that have heavy equipment can work with the ranch to open up these areas to actually and figure out where we put these trenches or whatever to deposit the dead animals and to call out the weak ones. Um, but I want to hear from those who have more experience than I do um, in terms of how do we attack this immediate issue um, before the heavy rains come. So can, I, can, I, can I ask any of the hunters that are on this line and those who you know have the practical experience uh, to deal with you know waste waste issue the other thing too and i don't know i see kiani is on this line i see auntie stacy are there any is there any way to get like a vet to test the deer to hi hi malia TV? can you hear me Yes, who is this? Oh, this is Andy. I'm sorry. I'm only a part-time hunter. But um, <clears throat> if because this uh, issue was on the news, and if we do something like a GoFundMe and put it on the news again to say that we need help, if we help the hunters and provide bullets, because that's also um, a financial burden for uh, people, then um, they can, you know, help to uh, er eradicate and, and transport some the deer to the spot. Um, another idea I had was, say we invite five people from off island, say they have to pay $5,000 a piece to help do eradication, um, People would would donate their money and time, and uh, you know, and that would be twenty five thousand dollars to start a program, Molokai Deer Support. In um, and yeah, that was what I oh and and to get water trucks to water some areas and fields to support the deer that we do want to keep and keep them healthy. Okay, that was my ideas. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Sandy. Um, yeah, and what I've been hearing too is that uh, I guess when Molokai Ranch shut down, they they, they kind of discontinued having the troughs 
Uh, and so now the deer kind of desperate looking for water and they concentrated in certain areas. Um, so I don't know if we can work on some kind of watering program and reopen those troughs. Um, that would be a big effect of them. They would open up the troughs and begin to water. So that was Uncle Pepe talking in the background, Uncle Pepe Espanol, and he's a Manaloa hunter. And he was saying, yeah, that would make a difference if we got those water troughs going. Um, any other Manao? That would make it easier. The deer would concentrate around the water and then the hunters can come pick off the, the sickly ones mm. too. You know, and so the other thing too is um, I was talking to my cousin Dr. Boy, um, and he gave me some some input as well. Um, he was saying we we gotta we gotta um, talk to guys like Uncle Jimmy Duvachel who understands pasture management and rotation, and it it might be we we have to you know create sort of like a, a deer range, you know, and rotate grounds where they can feed and plant certain things for them to eat. And then have, you know, when we want them to, to migrate to another area, then we put water there and maybe we close off that section, almost like fish pond kind, honestly, but fish pond on land or deer pond on land kind. But um, it looks like they don't have enough food. They don't have enough water. Um, and, you know, there's these erosion gullies. So maybe we can direct them away from the erosion gullies. And if we create these deer away, then, uh, and kind of direct their path and movement, then we can plant and in areas that secure, um, that secure, um, best, better secure the land and we don't have all that silt going in the ocean. Um, but I, I think that maybe is like mid, mid medium term, long term uh, plan we got to look at. Um, but, but, does anyone know of a vet or who we need to contact to just do some testing of the deer to determine if there is disease going in them and Malia. fermenting? Yes, Keoni. Aloha, mahalo for um, holding this meeting. Uh, aloha, everyone. Um, Council Member Keoni Rollins Fernandez. And um, my understanding was that uh, Department of Health or DLNR, one of the state departments, uh, did conduct, uh, did have a vet conduct some testing and that their determination was that it was starvation. Um, my understanding from some hunters was that, that um, like Auntie Barbara was talking about, that deer are eating things that they normally don't eat. Um, and so that could be having an impact on them as well, because the things that they're eating now is out of desperation mm -hmm. and, um, you know, could be affecting their health as well. Um, <clears throat> I, my, I, I chatted, because I, I don't want to speak for any department. Um, this is just the reports that I've been reading. Um, and what I also understand as far as, um, you know, digging holes to bury carcasses in um, department of um, DHHL has also been contacted to um, dig some holes for this purpose. Uh, so Representative Decoit, I guess, has been working with some of the state departments to um, conduct some of these things that uh, we're talking about at this meeting. Um, and you mentioned uh, funding. So the county does have uh, funding right now in its budget. It has uh, $300,000 for each island. So $300,000 for Molokai, $300,000 for Lanai, and $300,000 for uh, Maui. Um, how quickly uh, that funding would be available um, 
you know, as you correctly pointed out, it, it's generally a process. So uh, it might take some time and wouldn't provide the uh, immediate, um, you know, mitigation that you were, you know, initially talking about for the uh, short term immediate problems and then, um, you know, more medium term and then long term. Uh, so I just want to share some of that information. In terms of coordination and who, I mean, how, how this funding is made available, do we need some kind of nonprofit entity to apply for these funds? Um, what, what's going to work here, I guess? I think we need to make sure that we have, you know, the different government officials on the line working together with specific community leaders that can make these funds accessible. I think um, as Auntie Sandy stated, you know, getting bullets for the okay. hunters is gonna be important. Okay. If we're gonna um, call out the, the weak, weak herd, weak, part, uh, weak animals in the herd. Um, so I don't know if, is there, maybe immediate assistance we can give to our hunters to give them bullets to do this work. And then, um, you know, coordination with Molokai Ranch and other entities like DHHL in terms of organizing our hunters to do that work. Um, Alia. Christian. I just wanted to comment because I mean, I know in the comment, like part of the issue is just the whole private, you know, private lands. And because there's like a multitude of owners, you know, that the DR are running across. Um, I think my comment is mainly in terms of coordinating hunters, you know, so I'm, I'm a volunteer instructor for the hunter ed program and I've been coming up, you know, to help with classes and stuff on Molokai, but um, well, I guess an update is actually, we just recently got approved, the Hunter Ed program got approved to do a completely online course for licensing. Um, because in terms of, and that was tying into private land, because oftentimes in order to work out agreements or to, for landowners to issue permits for people to come on, they're asking for licensed hunters. Um, so, and in terms of licensing, we haven't had classes, of course, this whole past, well, last year, we shifted to, you know, try to produce like an online course to help out with that because there were over 900 people waiting to complete the hybrid class where they did part of the coursework online and then the other part was supposed to be in-person conclusion. So the Hunter Ed program has been working to kind of at least do that part to help produce more licensed hunters in order to have more, uh, maybe more cooperation with private landowners, you know, to issue more permits. And in terms of actually, you know, providing, you know, ammunition or whatever, sometimes, you know, if you issue permits, you have a certain bag limit, you know, in terms of, you know, management, right? Like how many the hunter is able to take out. And then also, incidentally, they can actually help to call, you know, like for the ones that kind of just need to be, need to go down because they're just starving. But um, so that was just my broad, you know, comment in terms of, all of that so thank you yeah you know Dion to my before my uncle Billy Akuragawa passed he kind of shared with me um suggestions on on the curriculum for hunter and licensing and he said it's important to see hunters as um part of the conservation yeah a lot of times we have um conservation conservationists and hunters not seeing eye to eye. But my uncle was telling me, you know, you gotta see the hunters as part of a conservation plan. And we could create maybe a customized curriculum on conservation, utilizing our hunters for conservation on Molokai. So I'm not sure if what the, existing curriculum looks like, but I think 
you know, coordinating through the hunter education ways that our hunters can work together in those conservation efforts. And um, I know, I think Justin Lua Falemana is on the line here too. And one of the advice that he had given me when we were looking at the Malae fencing yeah, um, in 2014 was that we need to have like a hunting hui with common um, liability insurance and utilize the hunting hui to to go and um, you know hunt and get meat for the for the people um, and go you know go into these areas that have too much deer overpopulation. So you know since that time I see that Justin them have this Molokai hunting club and earlier on Puuhuku Ranch met with our Ahakiole about you know the the deer issues in on the in Manae side on the ranch lands and so the hunting club with Justin folks have been um, working very well with Puhoku Ranch. And I was told by Coco Augustier that they're working with the Molokai Hunting Club too. So I don't know, um, Justin, if you have some mana'o that you can share on how best to coordinate these things and what are the needs of the hunters? Justin, are you still on the line or did you get off? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Ah, uh, aloha, wait there. Going on. Yeah, we can hear you, Justin. My leg, can you hear me? I'm kind of broken up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I, I kind of was going in and out, and I just caught uh, briefly. But I do agree that we all got to work together and um, be a part of the solution. And us as the Molokai Hunting Club, we believe in a community. Our community is the solution to the problem we have. This is an um, island, island problem. So. And Justin, um, Coco told me that you guys are working with the Molokai Ranch. Can you, can you kind of, since Coco's not here, can you kind of explain what, what you guys are doing so far on this issue and how things are coordinated and if, the, if we got hunters on the line that's not part of that work, how they can be involved? Uh, yes. I can uh, briefly uh, explain that. So, you know, Coco has been really great. Um, she's been working with us and we really appreciate her. There's been good communication with the Molokai Hunting Club and Coco. And we just uh, coordinate dates that we can go and we get everybody all signed up on the waiver and everyone that participates in the hunt needs a, a current uh, hunting current license. Hunting. And, <clears throat> Um, we just go in and we just uh, work the pastures right now. We've been doing the pasture hunts and just trying to take out mostly of the, the sick and malnourished uh, deer. And uh, it's been working good. We did we did uh, three hunts. Uh, we just did one yesterday. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing process, but um, if people do want to sign up, if people do want to help out, and they do have a current hunting license, just uh, contact me or Troy Tungkai or the Molokai Hunting Club and we'll definitely get more information on how um, you can help out. And even though if you're not a hunter, let me explain this, even though if you're not a hunter, you still can participate and be a part of the solution. If you feel like you wanna donate, um, you know, your time, any goods, uh, gas, bullets, like how you guys are saying, Anything would be greatly appreciated because um, this is an island-wide problem and we need the help of the community. We need everybody to work together and just be a part of the solution. 
stress in some follow up questions. So, do you guys have like a non profit that receives funding or something for bullets and whatever needs of the hunters? Uh, and I I see in the chat here that there is a big hole where Molokai Ranch has made to deposit deer carcasses. So are you guys basically shooting the kind of weak deer and depositing them in a hole or is your guys function just for hunt deer and get meat and families? Um, yeah, so, so, so. Okay, so answer your first question. We did apply for 401c3 and it went in on December 4th as a Molokai hunting club. So we did apply, it usually takes 30 days to hear back. We are waiting to hear back from that. Um, and we do have our bylaws, our mission statement, our code of conduct, and our uh, board of directors with the Molokai Hunting Club. And yes, right now all the sickly and malnourished deer that we do remove, we are taking it to a um, designated area to uh, dispose properly. And then is your membership only Manai hunters or is it all over hunters? Um, our membership is uh, Molokai and even um, off island. Um, you just gotta be sponsored if you do not have any close ties to um, Molokai. Um, and our membership does not require you to be a hunter. We do also other activities outside of hunting. Um, so we also do a lot of service projects. We do not just, um, we, we do not just, you know, say that you got to be a hunter. We encourage everyone to come and join the club. And this Thursday, this coming Thursday, it's our next meeting. And it starts at 7 o'clock. And we always do a, a live feed on Facebook to uh, reach out to everyone. So Thursday at 7 o'clock, want to join in Facebook. Um, that's the way we're doing our music all live. Well, mahalo. Thank you so much, um, Justin. Oh, thank you, guys. And I think if I can plug your expertise on conservation issues, too, like in a long-term planning, that would be important. Um, I also receive a private message from a hunter um, who wants to remain anonymous. Um, is there a way to propose a program for hunters that can't legally hunt because they don't have hunting license yet? Um, and the person said majority of the community are illegal hunters. You gotta wait, I gotta make Dion me said, um, Given that Dion said that we're, um, you know, the, that the hunter education program had to be postponed due to COVID and now they're getting an online program going. Are there ways we can utilize the majority of our hunters that are not licensed? Can they get amnesty in some way in order to be part of them? Anybody, anybody can answer that? Uh, I guess I, I, I can briefly touch up on that, yeah? So if we follow in um, Hawaii State uh, rules and regulation, it's required for you to get a hunting license if you're doing any form of hunting. So us, the Molokai Hunting Club, you know, we encourage and we try to provide the opportunities to get a hunting license. And... You know, now that it's online and that is up and going, I would encourage people to go out and get their hunting license. And so that way it alleviates uh, liability issues on the landowners itself. So now that the hunting license can be, get, can be done online, that's a great help. And I would say a bunch of People do have the hunting license, but they they don't 
they, they, sorry, they do not realize that it's, it's not a one-time purchase. You have to purchase it every year, right? On, on June 30th, it ends July 1st. It's, it's a new, new year, so you have to purchase another license. And, you know, all these monies that we do by our license it actually goes back into doing some type of conservation. So that, that is huge. So as far as the Molokai Hunting Club, we would support and provide opportunities to the community members who wants to get their hunting license. And a big push for the Molokai Hunting Club is try to get a hunter's education into the classrooms. You know, if that was good to get the, the hunter's education into the classroom somehow, you know, with um, some type of curriculum, environmental science or something in the schools, that would be great. So that way, if you go to, a, if you're in a classroom, you can get that opportunity, you can get that certificate, which will follow you throughout your whole lifetime, you know. Is it a, a cost impediment to get the license? Is it so expensive? Is, is that something we need to be looking at? Or we just have renegade hunters that don't like be regulated and have hunting license? I, I honestly think, I honestly think that, you know, the more we educate the younger hunters and even, you know, older hunters, the better for everyone. Um, it, they do have a fee, uh, 20, $20 is, is for the license every year. So every July 1st, the new year, you pay $20 for your hunting license and it lasts one year. So... And the class, when I went to the class, it was, um, it was uh, Friday, Saturday. So it was two days, the class, that, that when it was in class, so with your uncle, with Uncle Billy. He, I, was in, I did my hunting license when I was in high school. So you only have to be the age of 10. And from 10 to, I believe, 15, they require an adult with you in the room. But other than that, you know, we need to encourage our younger generations to go out and get their hunting license and be responsible hunters. And that's why, that's another reason why we formed up the hunting club again, just to have more responsible hunters and actually follow the rules and regulations. I just, Justin, I just wanted to say thank you for all of that because at one time we were actually trying to work with Puohoku to actually do a class there for the instructors to go. Then, of course, pandemic, <laughs> pandemic happened, and then you know we haven't actually had a class in person on Molokai um, since the, our last one early last year. But to your point of actually having the hunter ed curriculum in the school that actually was like a thing. Um, Cause I know at Lelehua High School, they had it for a little while because the, it was the woodshop teacher, you know, that actually kind of hosted it on, uh, on campus and stuff like that. And so one of our instructors also, you know, worked for Lelehua. So we can have it like that in the community, but to actually get it in the school would make complete sense, you know, like for that, uh, for the community, of course, from Molokai. Um, everywhere, in my opinion. However, you know, I think that it's so it's it's doable. You just kind of need a like a teacher who would be willing to, and of course, I guess an administration willing to roll that in to the curriculum, because it does pre like the whole segment. You know, twelve hours is wildlife and conservation principles and all a whole bunch of stuff. It's not just you know hunting and stuff like that. I, I like to add in uh, one more thing and um, thank you for that. I would also try to support, I, I would not try, I would support it if we had an instructor here on Molokai. Uh, we work, the hunting club has been working very closely with Daniel Jario. He is and an I instructor. know he does a lot. Yeah, Daniel is an instructor. So we actually had three on island instructors and then two of them quit. And so now it's just uh, Daniel. And so Daniel, myself, and Arlene, Arlene Ogura is actually the one overseeing uh, Molokai as the master instructor. And so basically Daniel just needs, you know, more time. And in the comments, someone else had also asked about bow hunting. And so bow hunting and other methods 
it's not requiring firearm are real important to have is then get to residential to residents the more uncomfortable they become you know with um you know just unintended discharge accidental discharge kind of stuff like that so bow hunting does uh, become important the closer you get to homes um so for sure i think reaching out to other organizations like daniel is an avid bow hunter like he's an amazing, amazing resource. So we're still very much in touch and he's been asking when we having our next class. Uh, unfortunately, you know, so we still wanna have classes in person on Molokai because, you know, we understand that, yeah, online makes access, I mean, it's not as accessible to everybody as we'd like to think. And so we'd like to still provide the in-person for Molokai, but the program is moving to completely online. So we haven't officially launched it yet. If you went to the website that I put in the chat, you're gonna see you can start the hybrid. So it's like a still part of it is online. You can start it, but right now it's not, um, hasn't been fully launched. It's already created, just we have to get the board to approve the, the fully online program, so. And I, I just couldn't read this private comment from one of our illegal hunters, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, he said, what about hunters who can't get a hunter's license? Just because we hunt illegally, that doesn't mean we don't know what we're doing. We're just putting food on the table. So I just want to just um, give that manao to, for the uh, anonymous hunter. Um. I, I just want to acknowledge that because Molokai is a hunting community and nobody needs permission to live. You know, um, I think the value of a hunter education certificate or just that, just it's, it's more so everybody being on the same page and having like the same baseline of knowledge in terms of like, you know, you don't go hunt with just anybody, you don't go dive with just anybody. You kind of pick your partner as well. Um, and so when you kind of have a baseline of, you know, safe firearms handling or just ethics, you know, kind of stuff, it, there, there's just a little bit more trust. And that's why I mentioned that private landowners often are requesting, you know, licensed hunters because they're kind of assuming that it comes with a certain level of education in terms of um, basic, you know, principles and ethics and stuff like that. So it's, this is not you know, like a dig or a, anything for unlicensed hunters. However, it's just more so like a level of, of um, yeah, well, it's just, it's just that. So just kind of wanted to acknowledge that. Okay, and you know, so I'm, I'm going through the chat now. I see, um, so let me just kind of, for those who are not reading the chat, um, so there was suggestions of creating committees by MOKU um, to focus on the issue of um, government only, uh, government is only a part of the help because of private land ownership. And you know, these committees can determine short term and long term plans. So I wanna, um, and then Michael really says composting car carcasses is an option. Um, yeah, Lisa provided that information for the bow hunt Hawaii. Uh, what else? I had? Let me see here. Yeah, so and then I saw something about a deer preserve in here. So I think we gotta somehow organize by people's levels of expertise. So we need like one committee that can figure out the government stuff and the funding part of it. So we can get monies to our hunters. We, we can, you know, get the fencing and to protect our Hawaiian homestead farmers. Maybe do the, this deer preserve kind of idea. Um, and then we need by people, you know, living in their moku to coordinate the hunters. So I'm, I'm open to suggestions on, on who wants to, might, might want to volunteer for certain things. Um, also, if 
you know, I think we need to hold some regular meetings. Um, so if everybody can put their like email or their contact information in the chat so that when we schedule more Zoom meetings, um, I'll, I'll be able to invite you all. Malia. Um, yes, Godfrey. I'll let you have something. Go ahead. So it's regarding um, the illegal hunting, yeah? And um, as you guys know, I'm the president for the Native Hawaiian Gathering Rights Association. So I just want to share a little bit information with everybody regarding that. So yes, people do have the right to gather. Um, however, when it comes to going onto private property or, or private land, yeah, um, there's an issue, yeah, with safety. And that's the whole point that Justin was, was getting at, getting the license. It, it helps encompass the safety aspect. That's one. So we also uh, encourage and support that. The second thing is when gathering, yeah, it's customary. It's customary to ask permission before you go on to the private property to gather the deer. So this, that is a whole separate issue when we're talking about um, getting access to the coastline, okay? So I just wanna be clear with that. Um, also, I work with the Molokai Archery uh, Bow Hunting Club so Molokai does have an archery club on the island. Um, and Nelson and I, we do lease land with Molokai Ranch up in Kahiloa area that we run hunts. Um, we have been offering to the community if they wanna come in, arch in it's an archery area. Uh, currently, we have met with Molokai Ranch and we have a game management plan. And it wasn't for the community. It was just for those areas that, that we working with Molokai Ranch. Um, at the same time, things started spiraling into, into where it is today, where the community um, is putting all of these things together. So our game management plan, maybe Coco never mentioned that, maybe because we waiting for confirmation from the higher ups, yeah. Um, but that same game, uh, game management plan that we had put together, it's ready to go, and it can be blanketed for the whole community, and it does cover a short term and a long term game management plan, and it does include the community. So. Um, I don't think at this time I'm at liberty to, to bust out all the details again, because we're still waiting for um, confirmation with, with who we're working with. Um, I believe Auntie Stacy is aware of the situation and um, it's going to be up to them to decide what they want to share. Thank you. Uh, mahalo, Godfrey. Uh, and I forget who mentioned this, but do you think, since you're part of the bow hunting gang, guys, is it feasible for hmm. you guys to be um, helping you know, farmers and other residential owners that have deer problems in their backyard? And, you know, we got that safety issue with guns firing. I mean, is there any kind of coordination on that level or you think your organization can help with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, that is a possibility. So I'll just give you an example though. Um, there were Kalukoi residents that, that had called and were asking for help. But the thing is, we, we managing the deals even in our own backyard, yeah? So at some point, everybody got to take responsibility for their own. I mean, it was even to the point where they're complaining about the smell, you know, so it's like, well, go get one shampoo and go bury them then, you know. So um, yes, yes, the answer is yes, we can, but 
it's not to the point where you're just going to call the Molokai Bull Hunting Club and we're going to come over there and take care of your problem. You know, again, we, we, we're dealing with funds because arrows cost money, broadheads cost money, uh, gasoline costs money, uh, time. Um, so in our game management plan, just to give you an idea, and I'll share some details, uh, which it does include archery, um, it includes air rifle, close to the houses, to push the deer out into areas where um, others can, with the, with the big firearms, they can shoot them with the rifle. And, and um, it's a coordinated effort. So the plan is actually ready to go. This FY is ready to go. But again, uh, we stay waiting for uh, maybe, I don't know, Auntie Stacy or Lynn or um, Keani or whatever you guys can do to assist. But the plan is out there. Um, and, and again, I'm not the one who's gonna say uh, and, and drop it onto the community and say, hey, this is the plan and, you know, but it, it is available for review at some point. Yeah. At some point it's, it's gonna be available for review for the community. I hope that answered your question. Um, yes, thank you, Godfrey. Yeah, and I'm just asking all these different questions to figure out who's, who's our guys that are hunting on the ground? What are the needs? You know, because as we look at funding and things like that, we gotta be able to know what we what we funding and what what those needs are. So, um. oh, well, one more thing I want to share is is that um, we have been trying to push on game management plan for several years now, um, and and it's gonna take a coordinated effort with the entire community. It cannot work. Like for example, just our area that we lease, um, the deers that we have in our area, they migrate to, into other areas. So it's hard when we try to manage in our area and then the deer go to another area and the guys just cowboy up inside there and just boss them up, yeah. Um, so we just need one, one, one total community effort with this and, and support. Um, and part of that is education too, uh, managing these, these animals. So my perspective of what just happened right now yeah, is just a perfect storm because you have a, you have a combination yeah, of overpopulation okay. and then you get one drought. I mean, just today we only, this is the first rain we had in a long time, good rain. And uh, this is January. So the drought, extended drought. Um, the animals come with the cattle. So um, everybody's livestock is hurting right now. And then we get COVID. So COVID is putting a lot of pressure because of the, the difficulty of bringing in bales of hay to feed the animals. Mm. So it's a, it's a perfect storm. Um, but at the same time, God is in charge and, and is getting a reset button right now because hundreds, they dying by the hundreds. And um, the population is dropping naturally, but it's just hard to see. Yeah? It's hard to watch the animals suffer like that. Um, and, and yes, I agree with you guys. We got to do something and we're trying to work it out. Thank you. Mahalo, Godfrey. Um, do we have any mana'o from um, other hunters? You know, Glory on the line, and Glory works on the conservation people. I'm not sure if you have any here, and T. Auntie Laurie. Auntie Laurie, do you have any mana'o on this? Um, with, uh, it was brought up about private landowners. We also got Nature Conservancy. I know you work a lot with them. Um, How's that, Malia? Um, no, I just was putting stuff in the chat. Um, I think it's awesome what everybody is sharing. Um, to address the issue. And then I think um, I, I love what 
Godfrey just had said and what Justin was saying earlier, uh, because they the boots on the ground um, that is trying to address this um, issue and focus on the issue. And so um, I just had put in a chat that um, if Godfrey guys and Justin guys, um, and I just adding Justin into this, if they met with the representatives um, and shared the plan with them. And then um, I see, okay, Ani responded that she never see the plan yet. Um, and then maybe because um, they wasn't ready, um, Godfrey, but I think it's pretty awesome that they're all taking out the time to um, think long range, yeah? Short range and long range. Um, Cause it's really complex, like Dion had said, because of all of the state. It's kind of more of a state issue because um, that is where all the wildlife rules and regulations reside um, it, within the state. Um, so the state has some authority, you know, that's why you're talking about hunting licenses and private land ownership. So that's like one long, it, it's, a, it's multi-jurisdictional, it's complex. Um, and then even with Godfrey pointing out um, about subsistence, and there's a cultural component to it. But in a short term, like Brada said, he said, eh, get the shovel and um, bury them. <laughs> So that is really what communities have to do right now in the 911 short term, yeah. Um, my son is a farmer. He's heavily impacted um, by deer every night. Um, he's out there um, with, you know, um, like Godfrey said, my air rifle, trying to protect his crops. Um, and so we know how difficult, you know, this is in the short term, so... I would say for now, we do what we can do. I like Barbara's um, feedback about each community coming up with um, their own working committee. And then hopefully we can all get together on um, somebody pulling in all that information from each MOKU and then working with the state and county and, and even some at the federal level, yeah, to um, have a long-term plan. But I am here um, if a lot of people I don't know on this call today and I currently am the coordinator for the invasive species committee but we deal with mostly incipient species not long-term historical and institutional type of um, issues like deer and but I am here to um, serve as a resource um, on other issues having dealt with deer also on Moko Okiave and the eradication efforts in 2012 and 2013. So we have a lot of connections. Uh, we're aware of the wildlife rules and we can serve as a resource. I am willing to serve. So thank you. Thank you for holding the meeting, Malia. And mahalo to everybody. Mahalo, Auntie Lori. Um since I um, have you on the line, I mean, is there a sense of how much deer is on the island, how much deer is on the west end, and what is a sustainable level? Like, if we, we got to drastically reduce the population, what does that look like? Because I was talking with my cousin Dart, and he was saying, he thinks there's like 60,000 deer on the west end and we may have to reduce it by 20,000. And that, that number just kind of scared the crap out of me. So I re so he was saying we got to get a sense like deer count, like how much deer is on the land, what is the carrying capacity. Um, so I just like know because I have no clue like how much deer we have and what is sustainable. Malia, I can share a little bit info. So we we out on the west end every weekend, and um, we seen the deers. We see the deers, yeah. And um, we have been making efforts to make some counts. So only gonna be one rough estimate, but it's nowhere close to sixty thousand. It's it's way lower than that. You know, when you look at one herd, when you look at one herd, people gonna say, you know, you look at one herd of thirty. 
They're going to say, oh, get about 50 or 100. You know, of the, of, I heard of 50 there. They're going to say, oh, it's 100. So a lot of times it's overestimated. But um, the numbers is, is um, a little lower than that. It, it would be more, more like 10,000 on the west side. And, and that's just one rough estimate of the, the, the area above Kalukoi that, that we, we manage. And then, Godfrey, how, of that 10,000, how much do you think are very sick? I cannot answer that question because, um, yeah, I, I don't know. So part of the game management plan is to, is to drop the sick ones, yeah? Drop the sick ones, um, whether, whether it's uh, those or box, but again, that, that is like I just went throw out one number to you guys. That's just a rough estimate. So to get a to get a number right now, we get deers dying, um, and I don't know how much they dying at a time. So the numbers is changing, yeah. And then you get right now the deers dropping babies, so the number is increasing. So it's just a trying to get a handle on that. And that's part of the game management plan where we have this, uh, is called the wildlife management unit where there's a formula, yeah? It's, it's similar to with the cattle, how you would have uh, um, maybe three cattle per acre. And um, it's, it's a similar formula, but it just depends on the pasture because some areas will be zero. There's absolutely no grass. So you're talking, that unit would be zero deer in there that could, or that, that land could sustain, yeah? Uh, but, but that's, yeah, uh, sorry, that's, that's kind of what we stay looking at. But that is something that we're trying to get a hold of as far as the, the numbers is concerned. But it's not, I don't believe that it's 60,000. Um, yeah, so I, the other thing too, in your management plan, are you guys looking at sort of not not killing off the big box and you know hunting more of the does to kind of you know I'm concerned about what I've been hearing is that you know now that you get Facebook and stuff like that and you got younger hunters that just like get the big box but it's affecting the gene pool you know and and then I'm hearing too that some guys waste meat they only get the, the filet mignon part um, and they're leaving the carcasses on the land. So it, as part of the game management, is it kind of looking also at responsible hunting and, and making sure you, you protect your top breeders and those that gonna keep the gene pool strong, um, you know, catching more does. It, is that part of the management plan as well? Yes, yes it is. Uh, and that's part of the problem, yeah, uh, that has been happening because you're only shooting the, the box. One buck can breed over 50 does. So if you're only taking off box, you're not really doing one management plan for the population. You gotta, you gotta eliminate those. And right now, you can go down there, and you can see a herd of 200. You can see 200 deers, and and you're not gonna see any bucks over 30 inches. We don't see that anymore. It's very rare. And you know, um, maybe you know at some point, um, the illegal hunters, whatever you like call them, the community, um, you know, they wanna. It, it's, it's hard not to let the big box go, okay? But at this point in time, uh, this is the situation we're in, that Lanai has, and Maui has way better quality animals, but that is the goal, is to produce better quality animals. And, and not just for guys from off island for come hunt, but for our community to have opportunities, better opportunities to, to shoot quality animals. That, that is, part of the goal for the management plan. So, so you know, if we're gonna make it so only off island guys can shoot a big rack, eh, who can support that? Yeah, so we gotta make them so that the community has that opportunity 
And then hopefully we can encourage everybody, including the illegal hunters, to help us with the plan to, to manage the doe population and to produce more quality animals. It's gonna take a big effort on a community's part. Yeah, mahalo for that. Um, I see Rebecca Crawl from uh, Representative DeCoit's office um, wanting to say something. Rebecca? Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm Rebecca from Representative DeCoit's office. I'm her office manager. She asked me to um, be in on the meeting today. She's in a few other meetings while she's here at the state capitol. Uh, getting everything together. She has been working with DLNR and DOH since the beginning of December on this because we know how much it's affecting everybody and she has been holding a few meetings with a few stakeholders, mainly the, the large landowners to see how best to manage, um, see how we can control the populations and go forward with a full community plan. So she has been working with um, Nelson Rappinot, who is the GMAC, the Game Management Advisory Commissioner for Molokai. I believe Nelson and Godfrey are working together on the, the plan. You know, so she's, she's been doing a lot going forward. She's trying to be as transparent as possible as we get the information, just like how she got all the phone numbers out for who to call for which land they fall on, if it's county, if it's state, if it's whatever. You know, we got all those phone numbers out. We're working on going forward. She was up in a helicopter on Monday with John Maderos from DLNR to do a survey of all the land and the deer and see where the herds are, what's going on. So um, again, just trying to do the, as much as she can within our state resources and also identify other resources, including private funding, county funding, what state funds are available. So as soon as we, once we, as we have the information, we have been disseminating it out Many of you guys are follow Rep DeCoy on her Facebook page. Many of you guys are on our email list. We send out an e-blast every Friday with information. So we're doing our best to um, put, add the information as we get it, um, put it on. And, um, you know, this is an issue. Obviously, all of us know this is an issue that's been going on for a while. Rep DeCoy has been introducing legislation on this for the past few years and regarding hunting um, and hunting access and training. So she just wants to let... Um, Everybody know that, you know, while she can't be here on this meeting today, we found out about through Facebook, you know, um, so it's the, you know, beginning of the legislative session again. So we have a lot of things going on. Right now, we only get two staff members, me and one other person. Normally, we'll have like three in an intern. And so it's, we have a little bit of a skeleton crew, but we're working hard. So we're kind of stretching all over the place. Uh, but uh, our office is always here and we uh, appreciate any of the concerns or feedback anybody has and uh, Rep. DeCoy just wants to assure everybody that as we get the information out from the state and the game management plan um, and the GMAC report that hasn't been published in three years that we're still waiting on, um, once we get those out, um, we will get them out to the community so we can all work together. So if you guys have any questions for for anything Rep. DeCoy has done, feel free to let me know. If I have the answers, I'll let you know. If not, we'll, we can circle back with everybody. Rebecca, um, is there any kind of immediate relief um, Rep. DeCoy's office could provide? I mean, in terms of funding? Uh, or or, or certain, fulfilling some of the needs, like the bullets for the hantas or whatever? I mean, that, uh, that's not something that she has like dollars for. She is looking to identify emergency funds with DLNR, DOH, and the governor's office, but it's not something that she can give, do she has any dollars to physically spend on. But we, we have identified a fine that we do know that's a need, we do know that's a cost and concern as well as gas, as um, others mentioned as well. So she's looking for those sources, but there's not, there's nothing for her to pull out except for her own pocket right now. So. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll be on. I'm going to switch off just because we have other people in the office right now, the camera off, but I'll still be here. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So I think, um, go ahead. Malia, I know this um, is maybe going on a little bit longer, but I did see that um, John Sprague from Lanai um, is on this call and he mentioned something in the chat. 
And um, he said, just for context, um, on Lanai, we estimate 35,000 deer based on FLIR helicopter surveys. I'm aware of the helicopter surveys that occur in Lanai. I think from that survey years ago, which was a few years ago, um, that it kind of was used to estimate um, counts for the island of Molokai, but I just wanted to um, throw caution into this whole putting a number to the um, estimate of deer on Molokai. I think we don't have, we have zero baseline studies except for the historical transits that DLNR run um, to do deer counts. Um, but we're also checking the black buck. I say we, but it's DLNR. Um, they have those numbers, and I believe they are public numbers on the transits that are historical runs for the past like 15 years. And so um, I think John can also, because they have the same issues on Lanai, um, but they haven't had the same money issues that we've had. Um, so I see that he um, is on board. Maybe he wants to share something from what they learned on Lanai, just to give us some context. Uh, sure, I can I can speak a little bit. So first and foremost, you know, I, I called in for this because, you know, on Lanai, we, we have a lot of the same issues. And I feel like, you know, anyone who was over here in, you know, 2012 remembers that um, we had a similar situation on Lanai where we had animals falling over dead and honestly, we're kind of in a position right now where we're still kind of on the knife's edge and it's been and not quite as dry over here as it has been over on Molokai, but um, you know, we're still concerned. And so, um, you know, we, we kind of feel your pain over on Molokai. Um, uh, just in terms of the numbers, just to provide just maybe a little bit of context. So um, in 2013, um, the company paid for a more in-depth uh, helicopter survey um, using a FLIR to detect that. Um, and uh, the direct count at the time was around 16,000, um, or I think it was 14,000 and they estimated based on detection that it was between 16 and 18,000. Um, on Lanai, we have a little bit better hunting data just because of the way that we're set up. Um, and that's just a condition of, of the situation we have. And so what we could do is we could model based on reproductive rates and the fact that um, on Lanai, it's been a green, um, the last five years have been pretty green. And based on the reproductive rate, we estimate roughly between 30 and 35,000 animals just on Lanai. Um, and so I, that's just kind of a context to, to have a sense of the number of animals that you can have on the landscape. Um, and even if, you know, Lanai is historically um, quite a bit drier um, and it has quite a bit less forage than, uh, than Molokai. So um, anyway, yeah, that's, um, that's what I'm happy to share. And if there's any other questions I can help with them, I'm, ha I'm happy to. Hey, John, since we got you here, and thank you so much for joining our meeting, um, are there any best practices? I mean, since you guys have dealt with, you know, starving deer and lacking water, like, how did you guys respond to it? And were there secondary effects, like, you know, like, did you guys have deer carcasses all over the place? And how did you guys handle waste issues, you know, and what were the effects, you know, what was, what is, did you guys determine what a sustainable population would be? Are, are you guys looking at deer preserves and growing food <laughs> for the deer? Like, whatever, you know, best practices you guys have that might be valuable for us to learn. Sure. Um, so I'll, I mean, that's, those are, like, I feel like we could sit down and we could, we could have a day long conversation kind of on all the things that you mentioned, because I think those are the things we wrestle with. I mean, in short, we do not know what a carrying capacity is on Lanai. We just know that we have too many. And we know that we have too many because of the damage that we see on the landscape. So, you know, for us, um, our, our goal in sort of working with the hunting community and working with the control staff that, that we have for the company, and I'm going to echo exactly what Godfrey said, it's all about the does. It's all about the does. You can, you, it, it, we don't even count bucks when it comes down to control work and herd size, because frankly, it, the, the, the bucks aren't the ones that are pumping out the funds. It's all about the does. So from our standpoint, we've been trying to increase the amount of doe harvest that we have on the landscape. And we've been trying to lean on the hunters as much as we can to do that. Um, to give you a sense, COVID kind of a weird year. Um, 
uh-huh. but we had uh, oh, over a hundred yes, sort of community hunt days on Lanai. And it's been um, in conjunction with the state. I got to give the state a call out because you guys know that um, they manage the CGMA over on the western part of the island. And they were able to facilitate doing community doe hunts because they had to cancel the reg hunting season, right? So we've really been focusing on trying to bring the herd size down island wide by facilitating and encouraging people to, to harvest those. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of disposal, I mean, everything you guys have talked about, we've we've looked at composting. There's a cost associated with that. Um, for us on Lanai, the water table that we have is is a thousand feet subsurface, and so we're not super worried about water contamination. And so, disposing of carcasses um, um, in pits when necessary is is has been a good protocol. Um, that being said, we also try to give them away. So you know, we um, unfortunately we can't give all of them away, but we we donate. Um, over 800 carcasses to the community a year um, that people can take home and eat. So um, I don't know, that's, that's just a little bit more information on that, I guess. Um, mahalo, John. And, you know, also my cousin Dart, he used to live on Lanai, and he was saying that with your guys' Muflon, you, got, you guys um, created some program for hunters where like they could harvest an extra you if um, the hunter killed, you know, those with deformed horns to try and make sure the population was resilient and more disease resistant. Yeah. And then you were saying, yeah. you guys hunt those. I mean, are there certain incentive programs that are created that might be valuable for us to incorporate here? I, you, you cut out a little bit on the end, um, but in terms of um, in terms of mouflon and access deer, we have probably an order of magnitude fewer mouflon than we do deer. So we figure tens of thousands of access, and we figure thousands of mouflon. So the mouflon are a little bit less of a concern from an overpopulation standpoint. Um, but yes, the state um, historically has provided incentive to harvest does and um, atypical. I'm sorry, not does use uh, mouflon use. Uh, and atypical rams to try to help manage that part of the population. Um, I also just see, just I see a couple of comments. Um, there was a question about how much it costs for the helicopter. Um, the island-wide survey ended up being about $90,000. Um, and we did that with Jake Muse um, over on Maui. So it, it was spendy. His price is maybe less at this point. I don't know, you'd have to contact him. Um, we are looking at doing drone-based FLIR survey because we think that's gonna be more efficient in the long run. But that's the thing is it all comes down to money. It's, you know, money and all this stuff. Um, and there are, there, are, there are other ways of doing it that are more cost effective, but they might not be as accurate. I see someone saying $1,000 for the helicopter. And that's true. It's $1,000. It's $1,000 to $1,200 for the helicopter per hour. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, Lurie's spot on. Um, uh, I also got a question about the support, and, and that is... Um, we get support from the state in terms of doing doe control management um, because it's a cooperative management area. So they have a lease from us. And so um, we coordinate with them to try to manage the herd as a whole. Um, and I guess I should stop and say, I'm, I'm the director of conservation for the company. So I'm, I'm hired by Pulama Lanai. And um, that's where the majority of our, our support comes from. And Pulama Lanai is a nonprofit. Uh, Pulama Lanai is the management company for, for the, the landowner, for Mr. Ellison. So Mr. Ellison owns that company and we are the management company for that property. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm recording this meeting and I'm wondering, um, since, you know, Justin and them have these regular Facebook live things, um, if it's possible for us to just post this discussion on the Justin's Them hunt, Hunting Club Facebook thing. But um, I wanna see how we can coordinate different committees. And I'm not, not sure if anybody is ready to say, I wanna be on a committee, but if you can put in a chat, like your, your areas of expertise and where you wanna be involved and in, and also what moku you live in um, then we can kind of coordinate. I can try to create some rough, rough and dirty com committee 
uh, assignments, I guess. But um, I'm thinking in terms of coordinating again, a meeting, um, if it's possible, Justin, to just coordinate it through you guys, since you have a greater social media presence. Um, I was just lucky that the Zoom meeting, people posted it on Facebook and shared it. So I wasn't expecting, um, I, I wasn't sure what, how much people was going to show up. But I think it is effective to kind of get the word out to our island through the social media. Is Justin still here or did he drop off? Oh, I think he, oh, Justin. Justin, can you unmute yourself? I sorry, I sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, yes. Uh, you know, the bottom line is we the Molokai Hunting Club, we just want to help and um, just help with this problem. And we just like be a part of the solution and we just like come together. We got to come together as a community and work on this. And um, if anybody's interested, please listen on Thursday night, seven o'clock, Facebook, Molokai Hunting Club. We will have a meeting and we already do have hunt scheduled with the Molokai Ranch throughout this month. Um, and, you know, means even though if you're now a hunter, please listen in and see how you can be a part of the solution. So we are willing to, I mean, since we're already talking with Molokai Ranch and working with them, and working with other landowners and associations, you know, we just want to keep moving forward and, uh, and just move forward positive, in a positive situation and just keep everything together. Okay, mahalo, Justin. I apologize, my, my auntie's making a smoothie in the background. <laughs> um, any other um, Mamako has been kind of quiet. Um, I think we should probably have another meeting and I think I'll try to set it up through Justin. If we could do a Facebook Live, you know, on this continuing issue. Um, and then I'll email everybody to know about meetings that I up with some of my government. Uh, yes, Mali, I just wanted to say thank you for putting this meeting together. Oh, okay. Oh, you're welcome, Justin. And is it okay if I try and set up the next meeting to do like a fee? Like, is it, uh, mahalo, Justin, and is it okay? I try to set up the next on your Facebook live thing. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, it is okay. Yes, it is okay. Mahalo. Uh, quiet guys. Um, any manao you guys get? Um, before we wrap up. I'm thinking of having another meeting next week, probably. And we'll just kind of work it around this hunting club. Like Uncle Mac, Uncle Walter Reedy. Any of you guys have some on that one? Hi, Maria. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, Malia and everyone here. Um, I, I, I live in Manaloa. And we do see these hunters come to help bring down the numbers. We, we see them. I see them. And they're doing a really awesome job to help us out up in the residence up, up here in Manila. Um, there was mention, suggestion of have um, a committee, com committees or something like that. Well, in Manolo, we, we already have. And as a, those that are in that group have been really trying to connect with the, connect with the ranch, yeah, to 
so try to sustain our own community because we want so small community and we're far away from everybody else. So we're trying to be sustainable on our side, but they've eaten it. The deer has eaten everything. And so we're very thankful for the, the people that has provided food, you know, the distributions in Mauna Loa that helped us out, out a lot. And I know Lehua, the farmers, you know, you guys going through a lot too. But just know that our, our Mauna Loa team is really trying our best to sustain ourselves because it takes a long time to have other, depend on other people to help us. So we really trying. So my suggestion to those other different parts of Molokai, you need to do the same. Cannot always depend on every other hunters to come to your place and help you bury stuff or help shoot stuff. You have to come together as a community in your own community, Kolehua, Manaloa, Manae, you know, that's, that's, that's how we've been doing it on our side on Manaloa. And um, if no more, if we can't do it as a community, then we're going to have continuing, continuing bickering and all that stuff. But if we can put all personal issues on the side, then can move forward in trying to work together in a, as a community and make things work. Um, in Mauna Loa, the ranch has helped us tremendously with taking out all the dead deer. And some community members who not living on ranch property, but living in the area, they've been told to do, to have certain um, instructions on what to do with the dead deer that's on their properties. And so, but um, as a community of each district on Molokai, it has to like Akaka and Justin, they said it's a community effort. And so if we can do that in different communities, come together and we, we can, we, we, it's, it's possible. So, but mahalo everybody for, for coming together and being civil and being nice to each other. Um, and Malia, thank you so much for opening this up to for a, being a community meeting. Um, mahalo lehoku and um, if you can put your information too in the chat, because um, I would like to talk to you and see how I can also assist with coordination. If you're saying you're having a hard time at some time, at some points, speaking with Molokai Ranch, I just want to make sure that the coordination is, is going well. Um, and then I know from my auntie Madonna, she worked with Manolo community, you guys created your sort of a hunting plan, yeah, when when you guys were doing the uh, Molokai Island community plan process. I, I remember my auntie Madonna saying that she met with the hunters in Manolo to develop a hunting plan. So I just want to um, kind of revisit that and see if um, those needs are being fulfilled and if coordination with Molokai Ranch is working on that level. Um, let me see if there's anything else here. Um, yeah, so I think we'll just coordinate another meeting and I'll be following up with some of the government kind people um, to just see how we can better coordinate these things. Um, yeah, so I, I really appreciate everyone being here. And as you said, everybody being cordial and with each other. Um, I know the problems are pretty mega and we haven't solved everything in this day, but I think we have maybe a good start. Um, so mahalo for that. Um, so if there's no other feedback, Further comments, um, I will um, adjourn the meeting. And just please make sure you set, put all your email and how to contact you. So I can keep you guys apprised of things. <clears throat> okay, so without further comment, I would just wanna say mahalo to everyone. 
Thank you for your time, and I will be in touch. Aloha. Thank you. Mahalo, everyone. <clears throat> Malia, can you stay on the Zoom so I can finish copying down all the notes from the chat? Oh, yes, yes, I'll stay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Harmony. All the email addresses, trying to get all those. Yeah. <coughs> what? I'll see the chat too and email it to you, Harmony. And Justin, I'm going to. I won't send you the video. How many you and download the chat? Um, I was just copying out the email addresses. I I would be downloading the chat, Kiani. And yeah, you guys you download the chat. Yeah, yeah I don't really want the. I'm, re I'm recording yeah. the, the Zoom too, so it'll yeah, be. I took I, took, I tried to take notes, but uh, I mean, I have like six pages of notes, but I'm sure I missed plenty, especially with it going in and out. But I have the basics. But yeah, you can, I mean, you guys can, we can add the chat down.